Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA A plus certification training course on computer power. On this training course, we're going to go through our CompTIA requirements for the A plus exam 22701 section 1.3. We're now into a section that talks about power supplies and a lot of computer power. And there's a lot of different topics we'll discuss that deal with AC adapters and ATX proprietary configurations and voltages and wattages and capacity. There is a voltage selector switch option we'll talk about. And finally, these different pin configurations that we have for our computer power supplies today. Before we get into the details of the different components for computer power, Let's step back and talk a little bit about what we can expect to see when we deal with computer power. Before we get into a discussion about the components inside of your computer, let's talk about what an amp and a volt is. We see this referenced quite a bit in the pieces of components that we buy to put in our computer. An ampere, or an abbreviated AMP, or as a capital A, is the rate of electron flow past a single point in one second. If you were to count amps going by, and the number of electrons going by one amp would equal to 6.242 times 10 to the 18th power of electrons per second going by a single point. Now, when you combine this with voltage, voltage, we'll see this talked about as, as a volt or as a capital V. This is thinking, think of this as the, the pressure that's pushing these electrons along. So we see, for instance, with a garden hose where you've got a small drip of water coming out of it, the voltage there might not be really a lot of voltage. But if you happen to have a lot more pressure behind it really pushing these electrons along, you'll see like a big fire hose, much higher amount of voltage associated with it. Now you start combining these things together, and you're going to have this idea of an electrical current. A watt is a measurement of how much power we are using. So you'll see if you take the number of volts and multiply it by the number of amps, you have a total wattage, so 120 volt power that we have generally here in the United States multiplied by half an amp, 0.5 amps, is equal to 60 watts of power. So when we start measuring how much power does your video card use, how much power does your uh, memory use inside of your computer, how much power does the CPU use, you add up all of these different pieces of hardware, and that's going to describe you how many watts you're going to need to make available, how big your wattage of your power supply needs to be. In fact, when you start sizing power supplies, you size them bigger than all of these different components inside of your computer. You don't really want to run a power supply at 100% all the time, so you really grow them to be very big. You'll also see a measurement of something called volt amperes, or VA. This is a measurement of apparent power. Now, generally speaking, when we're using our computers, the real power and the apparent power is really about the same thing. In fact, the the uh, to do the math, volts times amps, which is exactly the same thing as a wattage. But this is when you are measuring power systems that you're sizing out for things like uh, uninterruptible power supplies, UPS systems use these types of measurements. And they're used for the sizing process. So you can get an idea of, if I need to buy a UPS, what is the size that I need? How much apparent power is that UPS going to be able to use? So don't be thrown by these measurements of the wattage or the VA. They are essentially, in our normal use, the same thing. You really see the volt amperes being brought up quite a bit more when you're trying to size out UPS systems. The current running through our computer takes a couple of different forms. One, when we're plugging into the wall jack, generally is alternating current, something referred to as AC. And you will see this written in shortcut on many power supplies as this wavy line, because that really describes the sine wave that we see whenever we're looking at power going across the system. That's because the direction of AC is constantly reversing itself back and forth. Uh, you can see it goes high to low, and that just repeats itself all the way down the power line. Now, the reason we have this current that alternates back and forth like that is because it works very effectively when you start spreading it out over very long distances. Our power supplies for our homes are not coming from something next door. They're coming from many, many miles away. So you need to have some type of power that's able to move all the way across that long distance and not lose much power along the way. Now, the frequencies of this cycle, which you can see are very long or very short, will depend on where you are. In the United States and Canada, we usually will get 110 to 120 volts of AC. And you can see that runs at a, a, a cycle 
a frequency of 60 hertz, which is abbreviated as HZ. In Europe, they tend to run 220 to 240 volts of AC at 50 hertz, which is a little bit different. So you need to be careful when you are plugging into a outlet that may be in a different country. Make sure you understand exactly the type of current that's being used there, because you could create a lot of problems for yourself if you're plugging in with one power supply that is expecting one certain kind of current, and you're plugging into a different, a completely different current configuration. The other type of current we'll see in our computers is direct current, which you see referred to as DC. And you'll see this abbreviated symbol for DC, which is one line on the top and these smaller lines underneath. That means that the current moves in one direction, a constant set of voltage. Very, very simple in the way that we can think about the current flowing. There's not a lot of reversing back and forth. There's no frequencies to worry about. There's direct current. And it's very, very easy to know that that provides 12 volts. There it goes down that direction. This DC and AC we'll see referred to a lot on power supplies. So let's look at a power supply and really see what we would see if we were to look at the label on one of those and apply that back to some of the things that we've seen already in this module.